everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. We are celebrating women all week. We started yesterday for International Women's Day, and you don't want to miss our lineup of super crazy talented women creatives. So how's everyone doing today? Tell us where you're tuning in from. I see we already have a really um, busy, busy chat. We've got Cody, we've got Bev, we've got Anika, we've got Noor, we have Mia, Sam, Voodoo Val's in the chat. We have so many people. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. I'm your host, Shauna Lynn, and I'm here today with B. Grandinetti, who is a talented Brazilian illustrator currently residing in Stockholm. How are you today, B? Very good. Very excited for day two. How are you? Yay. I'm good. I'm very good. And I have, and because we have to show him, we have Teddy Bear today. <laughs> yes. So you oh. should have... Yes. I don't know how long he'll hang out. He'll probably, he'll probably go off my lap in a little while, but, um, oh, I was people in, uh, Texas and German from Mexico and Cody says, yes, B is wearing her banana shirt. <laughs> I love it. I went tropical today to get the vibes for the, for the illustration. <laughs> I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm wearing a Mac shirt today. So I like, I match the, the little buttons beneath us, our little name buttons. It, it kind of matches. Oh, look at you. Yeah, I tried. I tried to theme a little bit. <laughs> um, so if y'all are tuning in today and you aren't able to stay for the full two hours or you can't come back to, well, today's, you can't come back today. Um, we will be replaying the stream tomorrow and Thursday from 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific. It's going to be a, what's called a creative encore, and it's a good opportunity to watch a replay alongside other viewers in a moderated live chat. So the video will technically not be live but the chat will. Um, we're also on week two of our daily creative challenge. If you are hanging out here from the Photoshop daily creative challenge with Voodoo Val, thank you for staying. We're excited to have you. And we will also today have the Illustrator daily creative challenge with Claudie from Studio Print My Soul and the XD daily creative challenge with Howard Pinsky. Um, we also today have the Artist Spotlight and the Artist Spotlight is a segment on Adobe Live where we celebrate creatives in the community. If you want the opportunity to be featured in an artist spotlight, there's a little button above the chat. This is chat info and artist spotlight. So click the artist spotlight tab and submit your portfolio or the portfolio for creative you want to um, basically just, you know, give some, give some, you know, ups to just highlight someone that you really enjoy. Um, and we will be highlighting someone in the last about 30 minutes of the chat. There'll be a countdown and we will give about you know five to 10 minutes of just sharing their work. So let's get going. Yesterday, B created a really wonderful illustration and I'm gonna turn it over to her. And if you'd like to tell us a little about yourself and what you'll be working on today. Yeah. Let's, let's jump in. Thank you so much, Shauna. Uh, I guess, yeah, just a quick intro to whoever doesn't know me. Uh, do you have my screen on? Maybe I can just show a little bit of, yeah, this is my website, bigrandinetti.com. So if you don't know my work, you're welcome to, you know, check it out. Uh, it's a lot of colorful stuff. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that koala. <laughs> yeah, just chomping. Uh, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> nom, nom, yeah this is me during quarantine uh <laughs> i feel like everyone can relate to that one <laughs> nom, nom, just like staying at home in sweatpants and just like nom, nom. yeah uh as you can tell i'm a big fan of characters i think it was not intentional but i think a lot of my work is surrounding characters and mm. yeah here you can see like uh on the honey <laughs> I made a little uh, play with the names here oh, at honey. the top. I love it. <laughs> I know, it's silly. But yeah, here you can check like different, you know, projects that are a little bit longer, maybe like a longer video and stuff. And I explain a little bit about them and, you know, show all the designs, process, a couple of animated GIFs from it. But then I also have this section where it's just like a... I guess the big dump <laughs> of stuff, you know, like it's just like maybe like isolated illustrations that I feel they're not like a big project or smaller yeah. loops and gifts that I just want to drop them there. I'm still happy about them. And yeah, That's I so work. Fun. 
Well, thank you. I work uh, as an animation director, as an animator, as a designer, as an illustrator, kind of like everything in between. And as Shona said, I am born and raised in Brazil, but I've been living in Stockholm now for a couple of months. I was living in London for six years before. And oh, another thing that might be worthy to mention, and I forgot, totally forgot to mention yesterday, is that I'm also one of the co-founders of this amazing multi-platform community called Penimation, uh, which is a multi-platform community for women, trans and non-binary people working within animation and, and motion graphics. And for anyone who doesn't know, you can check it on uh, Instagram, uh, penimation.tv where every week we highlight a different creator and we do like weekly takeovers. It's really fun to, you know, get to find out a lot of different artists. And we also have a directory called animation.tv where people can look for diverse talent and use all of these filters to find out people and stuff. So yeah, That's check amazing. out animation. Oh, thank you. And okay, so recap on what we were doing yesterday. Yes. Uh, we did this sketch. I mean, we've done a couple of different versions of it. It started like this. And then, yeah, we tried a couple of different things. It's a couple of different versions of it, different mouths. I also uh, have the names we chose still written down. What are the That's names? So yeah, so we had two. We had two different options. We had Sandy, Mandy, and Candy. And then we had Honey, Bee, and Rose. I think Sandy, Mandy, and Candy were the were the winners, weren't they? I think so too. And then we had and, <laughs> and the baby was also known as Baby Sushi. <laughs> baby sushi. Yes. Baby sushi. I think we we stuck with uh, yeah, Sandy, Mandy, and Candy were so much fun. So we drew this very cute family. And yeah, I think we ended up with these uh, these options. There was A, B, <laughs> and C. C was just for fun, but no, no one really uh, <laughs> was a big fan. No of one. C. There was not <laughs> one vote for C. <laughs> no, but like were... we gave it. We gave though an audio like sound. We gave a sound to the to the face, and it was eh. Eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one liked the e eh kind of face. Yeah. So we were between B and A, yeah. but I think we are going to stick to A. And today we're just going to do some vectors. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, we have maybe an hour and 45 minutes or so. So I'm going to try my best to do like a, a yes. speed, <laughs> speed vector section. <laughs> we'll see how far I can take it, but uh, I'll try to, yeah, keep track of time and, uh, I'll, I'll keep track of time for you. Don't worry. You do your thing. Thank you, girl. Uh, so yeah, I just dragged this, you know, JPEG here on the, into Illustrator, and now we're gonna start vectorizing it. Awesome. Which is should be the more uh, chill and uh, meditative part of the process, I feel. But <laughs> let's see how it goes. Yeah. And if anyone's wondering, yesterday B worked completely in Photoshop and she used Kyle's Happy HB brush mm -hmm. um, for her sketches. Yes. Uh, the one thing I, that... <clears throat> oh, sorry, go for it. Oh, you're fine. I, I just I feel like someone's going to ask. <laughs> uh, there's one thing that you guys are going to notice. Like, uh, I don't know if you do that as well, Shrona, like, but I barely used layers in Illustrator. Whenever I'm working in Illustrator, I almost find that like layers don't, <laughs> unless it's something yeah. very specific and I really need layers for a specific reason. I almost, I find that I don't need layers in, in Illustrator because you can just like group stuff and, mm -hmm. and that kind of works, you know? So in this case, I'm only- in, yeah? I don't work in Illustrator all that often. So when I do, it really is just like a one layer thing. Yep. So I'm just actually using two layers because I want to keep my sketch in the top layer and lock it. Mm -hmm. And then it's on, it's going to be about vectorizing all of these shapes now and doing it very quickly. 
or as quick as possible. Uh -huh. I'm gonna start here. I mean, today is gonna be very chill. So you guys uh, feel free to yeah. just throw some questions and we can have a nice chat. Uh, Honestly, I mean, chill's the way we like it. It's, we like the goal with Adobe Live really is to make it sort of feel like you're in a co working space with friends. Hmm, cozy. Yeah. I know prior to like my involvement with Adobe Live years ago, I would sit in my studio and because I've been freelancing for about eight years now. And I would just play like, way, this is like way back when they were on Twitch, I would play Adobe Live for just hours and it, it felt like I was hanging out with friends all day and I learned things along the way. Yeah, that's amazing. You know what? Like a couple of my friends that bless my friends that have been uh, supporting on this, uh, they came over to watch, <laughs> to watch and, you know, support. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of them wrote me like, oh, I didn't know about the liquify thing before that I showed yesterday. Yeah. That was so, it was so interesting. Like I, I thought everyone knew, <laughs> but it's interesting how much like we learn just by seeing other people working as well. I've learned so many things just like working on Adobe Live, watching Adobe Live. Like I learned that, that eraser trick I was telling you yesterday. Mm. I learned that while I was streaming and Tim Mobist was in the chat and he's like, you know, you can do this, right? And I was like, life changed forever. <gasps> no, and now I like, like tell, yeah. I tell everyone that shortcut now. But like years ago, I remember learning clipping masks in Photoshop. I'd never used clipping masks before for illustration. And I learned them while watching Sid Weiler's stream. And uh -huh. they showed it and I was like, hold, hold up. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing i love it yeah that's uh wow. i've been working from home uh, for a couple of years and i think that was the thing i missed the most about actually sharing like a space with people is that is this sort of interaction that you know everyone has something to teach you it doesn't matter how experienced you are like people work so differently and then everyone is going to have a different you know smart way that they do something that you're like ah, i've been doing mm -hmm. this this the most stupid way for so long yeah, it's amazing. Like one thing someone can do can completely change your 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 whole process. But we already have a question. Oh, also Gus is in the chat. Hi, Gus. Hi, Gus. We love Gus here. Um, so Allison says, "What's the best way to get your foot in the door of the freelance illustration industry?" Oof. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna it's. That's one of those questions where like, there's a lot of different ways and it's finding the one that works best, but how is, how was your experience with that? <laughs> I'm not a, I might not be the best example. Uh, I mean, so I went through, cause it, I had a bit of a funny path. Like I, I studied graphic design and then I was working with graphic design for like a year and a half after I graduated. Uh, and then I came to Stockholm actually to study motion at the school called Hyper Island. And then after that, I just came back, you know, to being a student and then doing loads of internships and stuff, uh, because I was so fresh to animation and, and motion. And then I did three internships <laughs> in total. And then at a certain point I was like, okay, I need to stop being an intern now. Uh, and it was not really a good time. Like, uh to get like a full-time position back then like it was what year was it was it 2010 to no it was 2014 or, or something okay and I was like okay I guess I'm gonna freelance <laughs> and it because I guess like a lot of the people that start freelancing you know maybe they they've been doing this for a while they have the the network they know people like it, it's more like a, a well thought sort of <laughs> sort of process and I basically started freelancing because I literally didn't have another option yeah. but I was lucky that like I I think like it's all about you know having I was gonna say having the friends but like you know having the support network because I think my yeah. first gig that I started freelancing was because Hyper Island had this like alumni email that people were always sending like inquiries and Oh, I need someone to animate this and that. And that was my first freelance gig that I got through, mm -hmm. 
you know, the, the school's alumni. And then I think all of my first jobs was like just recommendation, you know? Yeah. I always feel like it's, it's important to say, you know, people are always like, make sure you network, make sure you network. And I'm like, network feels like a gross word to me. I am, I'm of the, of the belief that like make friends. Yeah. Make healthy relationships. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, I know a lot of my freelance stuff in the last few years, I've got, I've received some really cool opportunities just because a friend couldn't take the job yeah. and they'd throw it my way and, you know, vice versa. I have had things where I couldn't, I couldn't take it on or it wasn't in my, my wheelhouse. And I've recommended friends for the gigs. Absolutely. And, uh, I do that all the time. And like, you know, it's because uh, of course, like if you have a talented friend and someone that you trust and someone that you mm-hmm. like and someone that, you know, that is going to be a joy to work with them, why wouldn't I you think- recommend them? That and I feel like that's a very key thing that you just said. Like someone that is is nice and talented and kind. I feel like you can be as talented as you want, but if you are not someone that's easy to work with, that's gonna really hurt your chances. And like I personally, there's certain people that I won't recommend because yeah, they're I don't want them to be a reflection to a client that I really enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So like, I will, you know, if someone maybe is not a hundred percent right for the job, but they could be, and they're at least a joy to work with, like, I will recommend them because they can learn. I'm with you a hundred percent. So I think for me as well, like attitude is so much more important. Like, okay, skills, you know, I'm sorry. There's like loads of talented skills, loads yeah. of talented uh, people uh, all over the globe. And <laughs> we, we find out about new people every day and you're like, oh my God, look at this person. I suck. You know, like this happens every yeah. single day. <laughs> and I'm sorry, like you can be the most uh, talented, skillful person if you're a jerk. Um, you know, there's loads of other talented people that are super humble, uh, you know, super team players. And those, by the end of the day, those are the people that I want to work with. Exactly. And honestly, you know, it seems like this industry is really large, but it, when you get as you, as you grow in your industry and as you, as you gain your experience and you, you get years in there, it's, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And you never want to have that reputation of being difficult to work with because word gets around. That's like, I'm curious, like, cause uh, I guess we are on slightly different industries. Like I feel that a lot about the motion industry, like it's still fairly like a Mm -hmm. new discipline, let's say. And uh, it is like, I 100% feel that way about the motion industry. It's like, it's still tiny and still, you know, if you're an asshole, the... <laughs> yeah. oh, sorry, can, I, can I say this live? Like I've been cursing a lot and I'm not even sure I'm supposed to say those things. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, word gets around, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, people yeah, don't, you know, if you have that attitude, like you're not going to last for super long in our industry. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, you know, work hard and be kind to people. Yes. You know, because work can only take you so far if you are if you are hard to work with, then that's going to hinder your your create your um, job prospects and things. There was um, a sentence that I heard once that I think is really good. It's like you know, your career is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm-hmm. And you know, just remember to leave your ego at the door. We we all have so much to learn from each other. Exactly. And it's, and I know it's hard these days, like with social media and stuff to look at some of these, you know, much younger creatives working for these huge companies and feel like you're behind, but every day. Yeah. But honestly, like it's never too late. I mean, I, I don't know about you. I graduated college in 2010 and social media was still newer. Like I joined Facebook when you had to have a college email still. Oh and um, yeah, I'm oh, old. Was that a thing? I, I, that, I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> that was a thing. Yeah, you had to have a .edu email to join Facebook. And then like, I think my sophomore year, they opened it up to like anyone that wanted to join could join. You just had to be 13. Um, uh-huh. So aging myself here. But <laughs> it's, you know, even even personally, like it's really hard to, you know, it's it's weird to like look and see these really young artists work for these huge companies it's like what am I doing wrong and you have to realize that like it's okay to accomplish things later in life it's okay to 
not do work. You don't have to, you know, do work for the big, the big names. Like in the end, do you want to do really great work or do you want to have big names on your, on your roster? Yeah. And you know, I think like, even, you know, I try to think if, even besides work, because sometimes you see like all of these super talented young people and stuff uh, that they are so much better than you. And they're like 20 and they're like, okay, mm-hmm. kill me. <laughs> uh, what's left for me, you know, but then yeah people have such a different like life history and I'm sure that like Mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that I learned throughout my life and the different experiences that I have are so different from from this person and ultimately for me is like okay being great at what I do that's important but I think ultimately for me what's more important is like just being a good person and learning empathy and and having like all of those I wouldn't change anything, you know, about all the different like life experiences that I had as well. Yeah, that can definitely really, you know, that does affect and and kind of guide where your where your um, career and stuff goes. Like, I wasn't gonna my my original plan in life was I was gonna go into freelance when I was like thirty five. <laughs> was and that your original plan? <laughs> that was my original plan because I I was actually in a, I was a graphic designer. And I was like, I want to work in the field for like 10 years. I just want to get that under my belt. And then I eventually, you know, I was like, then I'll get married and I'll, you know, settle down somewhere and I'll work from home and I'll be a, I'll be a freelancer. And I'm so glad it didn't happen that way. Instead, I got fired. (laughs) I love all of your planning. Like that's wild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it was really, it was a very strange plan. Like I was, I was like that, that's what I want to do. I was like, so I wanted to have like field experience first, like really build myself up, have a really strong portfolio. And then I was going to go into freelance. And then I got fired and I jumped into illustrations. I was like, honestly, this is what I want to do. This is something I've always enjoyed and I might as well give it a shot. And if it doesn't work. And I was in, I was in a fortunate position where my parents like, give it six months. And if it doesn't work in six months, then you can job, you know, then go job hunt. But I was like, I think I was 20. 324 at the time and so i've been at that now i'm um now i'm 33 and it's working wow are you one of those people that make like super long-term plans like i i'm curious like i, I don't oh. think i know that many of those uh, those kind of people strangely enough no it, that was like <laughs> that was like my 10-year plan when people would say like what's your 10-year plan i was like i'd like to be freelancing by the time i'm 35 mm-hmm. but as far much. as like long-term plans I'm like everything changes year to year and everything changes like even day to day and I'm like "Mm, if I can if I can just be happy every day that's that's enough Mm -hmm. like my only long-term plan right now is like getting a house and getting Teddy another getting Teddy a buddy oh you're gonna get him a buddy I'm gonna get him uh, gonna get another shih tzu so he's got a buddy his name's going to be Henry Snickers (laughs) (laughs) what a cute bunch yeah, uh, I think. Have, uh... Oh, uh, just just a quick uh, introduction. Yeah. Uh, just because I I, fe- I feel it's worthy to explain to people what I'm doing. Uh, I'm for now like I'm just focusing on the shapes. Like I'm just throwing absolutely random colors. Uh, I don't want to worry about colors now. Like this is something that I bring up later on. So just so you know that like okay, I know that this is ugly. We all know that this is ugly, and it's all good. <laughs> You say it's ugly. I tend to disagree, but you know, to each their own. We're our own biggest critics. <laughs> um, we have uh, Angela says, I tend to paint in Photoshop, especially portraits. I would love to get into making illustrations for books and learn vector art. What are the best ways to start learning illustration? Ooh, uh, I mean, does she mean like illustration on Illustrator, I guess, or? Yeah. It, yeah, maybe could we get like could we get clarification on that, Angela? Like, are you talking about how like the best way to learn the program Illustrator? Because I think a lot of it is just really diving in and just playing mm. until things work. You know what? From like, it's funny because uh, I felt that like when I was starting to learn, oh, wrong wrong keys. Uh, when I was starting to learn all the you know the different softwares from Adobe and stuff. Like, I feel that Photoshop is so, you know, quick for you to pick it up. But then I think Illustrator maybe took me a little bit longer, like maybe slightly a tiny bit more intimidating, but not so much. And then After Effects is really like the first time you open After Effects, like, eh. 
what is this? <laughs> but then you pick it Texas up. This is hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like uh, what actually taught me to vectorize well in Illustrator, it was like a forced, uh, you know, crash course, was when I was studying graphic design at my university, Wengi in Brazil. I took this uh, extra class on typography. And then we were supposed to create our own fonts. Oh yes, girl. that's a fun thing to do. I've I have delved into that. <laughs> yeah, girl. Like when you have to vectorize like letters and stuff, like bad vectors really show. Like broken vectors uh -huh. really, really show. And then I think that was like when my vector skills really, you know, leveled up because uh, you you can really tell when you know it's badly vectorized when it has too many points when it's wonky when it. Yeah. Yeah. I think another way too, like I, I always tell people if they want to learn how to, you know, draw and paint in Photoshop, like a lot of like things I did to get used to using at least my Cintiq was I would trace stuff that I'd already drawn so that I could get mm. comfortable just figuring out like the, how the pen worked. And I think the same kind of goes for Illustrator. Like if you want to get comfortable, but you don't want the pressure of coming up with your own piece, like find something that's fairly on the simpler side, like just find, you know, something that is very shape-based um, to try to trace in Illustrator to just feel out how the pen works, how to figure out the different aspects of the program and just don't post it because it's not your work. Yeah. But yeah. the tracing aspect is a really good way to take the time to learn and like kind of just get comfortable with the program. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I think when you're starting out, like just, uh, you know, in a sense, like copying other people's uh, work and like just, you know, trying to break down what they're doing and stuff. I mean, obviously, don't ever post it as if like, this is mine. I made it from scratch, yeah. uh, you know, but I think it can be amazing learning also with animation. You know, when you find an animation that you really love and you're like, how does this move? Mm -hmm. why does it work why is it so good and then you break it down frame by frame and then like there's so many clicks that happen on your brain when you do that you know yeah um we have a couple other questions in here but i'm going to jump to one that is relevant um dante says what shortcut did you just use to join those paths or did you group them real quick for the hair oh did, did you just use pathfinder <laughs> which which uh i'm not um, sure which paths they mean the when you were doing the wavies on the hair at the hairline you were doing a separate vector for the the bangs oh uh no it's yeah. it's not uh it's a separate shape oh okay it's still a, a, it's a completely okay. separate shape but just the same color and then maybe it looks like it's the same thing but yeah. i just changed the order so i just like you know clicked on the face and then paste it in place so it will be in front of the face. And there's the answer. Thank yeah. you. Let me yeah, uh, let me know if that answered the question. <laughs> yeah. And then we have Oh, here's a fun one. If you Megan wants to know if you weren't doing illustration, what job would you do instead, <laughs> creative or not? Oh my god. <laughs> uh so many. Uh I could be doing pottery. I would love to do pottery. I, I mean, I, I took a couple of pottery classes and it's my one of my many hobbies. I actually cool. have way too many hobbies. I feel like what's going to be left for me when I'm an old lady, because I'm already burning all of my old ladies or hobbies. So <laughs> <laughs> I could be doing pottery. Another thing that I, I was doing a lot uh, in London because I had a garden. I was doing a lot of gardening. Uh, just oh. planting a lot of stuff, planting my own veggies. It was the best time of my life. So I could be a gardener. I would love that as well. Oh, that's so fun. Or my could... mom and I planted tulips right before the winter hit and they're starting to sprout. I'm like, that's my excitement this week. <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. And you know, you don't need much to be excited about life and think that life is beautiful. Just like yeah. Mama Nature is the best artist and you can be forever in awe if you pay attention. Like, And it's so weird that like we're so detached from understanding how things work. Like I remember I was planting um, carrots. Have you seen a carrot flower? No. Yeah, right? Me neither. I didn't even know like, okay, carrots have flowers, right? <laughs> 
and they are like the most beautiful amazing uh, it's almost like a little bouquet you know of, of white flowers and stuff what? and i was like look at that carrots have flowers and i don't know and i eat carrots like every week and i don't yeah. know the stuff that i'm eating you know this is ridiculous oh so, that's so cool i didn't know that carrots have flowers you you guys should google uh carrot flower it's amazing uh so you see like now i'm uh that's why sometimes I really clean up my sketches before uh, vectorizing because otherwise you're like, what the hell am I even uh, vectorizing? You kind of have to yeah. decipher <laughs> decipher nice. your lines as you're doing it. It's happy. It's as Bob Ross would say, happy accidents. <laughs> happy little accidents. Oh, that guy. Um, oh, so I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball there. Uh, ooh, do you know okay. that actually Bob Ross had a mentor? And uh, he kind of actually maybe copied a little bit like his mentor because his mentor was also like doing videos and stuff. Uh, I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. I see. I have a I have a very big love of Bob Ross, and I've got a friend where we send each other Bob Ross things um, anytime we find them. And my most recent acquisition from her was this Bob Ross bobblehead. Oh my god, I love it. I have a finger puppet of Bob Ross as well. It's so great. But you know, I it, think what it talks, but like I I think the battery's dying because it's like muffled. <laughs> and I was like, happy little wax. Yeah. <laughs> happy little wax. But I think what's the name of his mentor? Is like it's it's Will or Bill something. And he's like the loveliest uh, old man i think he's german and he has like a super lovely accent and but the thing is he's he's like such a chaotic uh personality like he's absolute chaos and then what i think that bob ross did was like adding all of the charisma and the asmr aspect mm -hmm. to it it's like oh there you know like he, he added all of that stuff that yeah the other guy didn't didn't have unfortunately Cody Bear says, gardening is so rewarding. Carrots flower to spread seeds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that stuff. Yeah. On the subject, too, of, um, of the copying to learn, uh, Ural says, I think that showing the original and giving credit and then showing your work builds trust and respect in the industry while still showing what you bring to the table. And I do yeah. agree. And I think part of the reason that we do have such a stance on it is very often like I've come across people that have used my work as a reference and they've used it to trace and copy and they don't credit me. Yeah, and so but... that's where like, I think that's where a lot of our, our like curmudgeon -y feelings on it come from where we're just like, don't post it anywhere. Um, yeah, but... that's, that's not too fun, is it? When people like just made a copy and uh, <laughs> don't yeah. even care to I... credit you. <laughs> I, I did an alphabet years ago and it was um I, I did this like alphabet drawing years ago and someone copied it and they posted it like they had done it themselves they didn't say it was a study hmm. they didn't say they that it was like they didn't credit me I'm pretty sure they just found it on Pinterest and it caused <laughs> my I posted about it on Facebook I was like I feel flattered but I'm like kind of not flattered too because I would like to have been credited and um this guy I know was like just just be flattered and move on and I was like but it's my work yeah it's yeah so it, you know it's not it's not polite it's not like a good team player sort of a attitude yeah. right yeah so I think I if you are willing to give credit and you do give credit I think it's fantastic you know it's a good way to learn it's like I, I'm not against people using my work to study yeah I think you know some people they it, it depends, you know, everyone sees that differently and some people get really offended when they get copied and without any credit and stuff. And I understand, like, because some people get copied a lot, especially if they have, like, yeah. a very specific style. And sometimes people would just rip off their style uh, mm -hmm. for big clients and probably earn a lot of money just on, you know, based on copying your work and stuff. So I understand people yeah. getting really upset. But my personal approach is that, like, you know what? I post my work on the interwebs <laughs> yeah. and the interwebs is there for uh, what it is and you know it's wild and it's okay if people copy because like by the end of the day like I think that you know I'm, I'm gonna attract the right people and and you know if, if you're talented maybe people 
are still going to come after you for what you have to offer and your unique taste and you know points of view and stuff so but i understand people get that get very very upset about that stuff definitely understand yeah i agree um let's see as a freelance designer so annika wants to know as a freelance graphic designer do you find it hard to say no to a job <laughs> As a woman, yes, I also uh, <laughs> find it hard to say no to stuff. I think it's a constant learning. Yeah. I feel like, um, I mean, I think it definitely got easier. Maybe like in the beginning when you're learning how to freelance and learning how everything works. And I think especially in the beginning, like because freelance can be a little bit up, ups and downs. And sometimes you have like a lot of demand and sometimes it's very quiet and stuff and you're like freaking out because like oh people are gonna forget that I exist and uh, I'm not gonna have any jobs and then you end up saying yes to the first thing that shows up because you're scared you know of not uh, yeah having a job and that sort of stuff and I think that comes with experience you you feel uncomfortable with like it's okay the jobs are gonna come and and learning how to say no to things but I particularly struggle with I get too excited about everything all the time. Like, I feel like I'm, a, you know, there is a light and I'm a fly, like looking at the light, like, oh, this is interesting. This is cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and then like the next, uh, you know, light <laughs> shows up and I'm like, oh, but this is also interesting. And then I say yes to too many things. And then I spread myself way too thin. Yeah. So it's a learning. I think I'm, I'm still learning. I'm trying to get better at it, but. It's a slow learning curve for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, and yeah, Clever Devlin says promoting the in your own style is a fun way to share and gain experience without just stealing. So those um, like draw this in your own style posts that artists do. Um, uh -huh, wait, sorry, can you repeat the beginning of the question? I got a bit of a... Yeah, um, I got, I sorry, I like detoured back to that, to the subject of like the copying to learn. Uh-huh, yeah. And um, Clever says, promoting in your own style is an experience without just stealing. So it's the the ones where artists post, like Cody has one going right now, where it's draw this in your own style and they use their own illustration. And then you create something based off that illustration and you can credit it, credit the original artist. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree. I mean, just, you know. Just remember that people are humans and like you wouldn't mm -hmm. want people like doing that to you. <laughs> so exactly. Don't do it to others. Mm -hmm. So where is, uh, I'm curious to where do we have people from today? Oh yeah. Chat, let us know where you're tuning in from. I know we had, I think someone in it's a, a german from mexico in earlier um let me see i will scroll back and see how many people told us i think people were were slowly waking up this morning so i'm not sure we had a oh there was a lot of banana chat um banana chat yeah there was there was banana chat but there banana chat um we have robert is chat is tuning in from sweden Aha, Sweden. Yeah. We've got Miami. Archer's from Miami. Indonesia. Fairies from Indonesia. Angela is tuning in from Missouri. Mm -hmm. We have Alice tuning in from Margaret River, Australia. And Cody just gave us a reminder. Um, don't forget in one hour, we are going to be doing an artist spotlight. If you'd like to be considered and you'd like to nominate yourself or nominate another artist, um, just hit the artist spotlight tab in the chat box. You'll see it, it says chat info artist spotlight and you can submit your Behance for consideration to be spotlighted. We're just, it's a, it's a hype session for an artist. Oh, we have um, Prosha from Vancouver, Megan from Western Canada, Douglas from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, 
Oh, hello, Brazil, my people. Oi. Nice. I, have, are, you a, are you a Disney fan at all? Uh, of course. Okay. Lion King is, is, is probably my best, my favorite film of all times. Favorite movie. Yeah. Yes. Have you um, seen the documentary? It's on Disney Plus now, but it's uh, called Walt and El Grupo. Uh, is it the one that is talking about the people working at? Is that the one? Uh, it's the one where it's about um, Walt and the animation team's trip to South America. Um, I don't think it's. A, oh, okay. So it's really good, and it talks about how like it, it how it influenced um, movies like The Three Caballeros, and it shows like how it was that trip where Mary Blair became the Mary Blair that we know. Um, mm -hmm. But they talk. There's a, a very big section of it where they are in Brazil. Huh. Okay, I'm curious. There was so much stuff to watch. I need to catch up with so many series. Yeah, it's a it's so. a really good documentary. I've watched it several times, and a good portion of it is in, um, I believe, Spanish and Portuguese. Uh -huh. So a lot of subtitles um, for those of us who can't speak the language. <laughs> yes. Um, but it really is. It's there's a lot of very good music is shown in it. Um, a lot of old footage. It's really really cool. Uh -huh. Cody says, I've been meaning to watch that. Cody, watch it. Take time today. Watch it because it's good. Mm -hmm. We have a uh, URLs in Central Texas. We've got, I really have got to uh, increase the size of my, my chat here because I've got the computer like <laughs> a foot away from my head, um, but my eyesight is not great. <laughs> That's what thanks computers to, do to you. Yeah. Thanks to years of, of shoving my face like five inches from my screen, I have trouble reading things far away. Girl, um, I'm with you. I cannot do makeup anymore, actually. Really? So, yeah, it's like it's like just doing an eyeliner because I cannot, you know, oh. wear my glasses when I'm doing it. Yeah. And now like I understand, like, okay, this is why, you know, old women maybe have like very wonky <laughs> makeup, and I'm becoming one of them. Yeah, I'm I'm very nearsighted so like I can without contacts and I can see to about like here um without my glasses and so maybe like I think the the max is like a foot from my face I can see without glasses and then anything farther away uh, it's just a big blur yeah I'm the opposite actually like I can I, I'm one of those like uh, old people that is like <laughs> you know like yeah <laughs> super far away I also learned I have, I have computer glasses I wear now, where they're the oh. ones that are just like the blue light blocking. Um, does that work? I, it does. I mean, yeah. it's like, so I have these and these mm -hmm. have like a slight yellow tint to them, but it does help kind of um, take that brightness down a little bit. So things aren't so stark and it keeps your eyes from getting um, like too worn out during the day. So I like, I like them. I'm just very bad about wearing them. Girl, I need one of these, I think. Uh, but it's, it's like, you know, these days when you buy a pair of glasses, it's like, okay, then you need the anti-reflex, which I clearly don't have. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then you need like the anti, you know, blue light. You need the anti-scratch because I scratch my glasses all the time as well. So it's, and then it like, you know, the price is 10 times more because of all of this mm -hmm. uh, upgrades. Yeah. I get mine where they're, I, I wear contacts that, um, and I wear ones that have like, they have like an SPF block or something, I think. So it's because I have very sensitive eyes um, because uh, they, in fact- They making you, with SPF? Uh... Or like UV, not SPF, UV yeah. blocking, UV. Uh -huh. um, because like if you, like people with brown eyes don't have as sensitive to light eyes because the, I guess the melanin in, in the, iris keeps your you know protect your eye a bit but i have i have blue eyes so they're very sensitive so if i got in the sun even if it's cloudy i have to wear sunglasses mm. and i don't like to have to switch out like glasses and then sunglasses and then this and then that so i wear contacts and they have uv blocking and they they work but it's i mean it's obviously not like wearing sunglasses every day but so i wear i wear contacts because i wearing glasses all day too gives me a headache so i have blue light blockers for when I'm working so that I don't hurt my eyes further. 
So is that actually a thing? Because like I always notice, like my husband is also like super photophobic, uh, and he's always complaining, like oh, it's too, it's too bright, and I'm like, oh, you, yeah. your, you know, your sensitive, uh, beautiful blue eyes and stuff. But I didn't know it was actually a thing. Like I was, I had a maybe a, a hunch that like, okay, maybe actually people with lighter eyes are more sensitive to light and stuff. But it is actually a thing then. Yeah, it is. I've um, I've looked it up. Uh, few times because I was like why is the sun hurt so much um, <laughs> why, why is it, it painful why, why does the, why does the sun betray me um yeah it, it is um when you have light eyes I guess my understanding is like there's if you have brown eyes there's more melanin in your eyes and that I think it's melanin correct me if I'm wrong if someone in chat knows better than me please let me know yeah um but when you have like really light eyes there's nothing to like protect your eyes from the sun um it's just like how like the paler you are the easier it is to burn um and those with more melanin in their skin can still burn but like I turn lobster red so it's and it's it takes like minutes in the sun for me to start burning so it's like no yeah so I'm oh, yes. but yeah so like it does um like your eyes are more sensitive if they're lighter and they're I think they can still be sensitive, obviously, if they're darker, but blue eyes, I think, tend to be the most sensitive to light. Interesting. Look at that science. Yeah. And if anyone is tuning in, just just tuning in now, um, B is working in Illustrator to vectorize this lovely drawing she created yesterday of this of this family. And oh. we've called them Sandy, Mandy, and Candy. <laughs> um, and we are just enjoying the process and she's open to answering any questions you may have. Yeah, I'm just trying to vectorize at the speed of life because I'm just, uh, I'm a little bit scared that's going to take uh, longer than, you know, you get what hour. you can done. You know, we're, we're here to, we're here to hype you. We're here to watch and but I it's, it's, get it all. <laughs> I know. I know that feeling. But you know what? It's a it's a chill work session essentially. It's just we're all here, we're hanging out, we're all friends. You oh, still okay. have an hour left, so you're good to go. Mm -hmm. Can can I can we we talk about something? Uh, yes. So I started uh, working on an Illustrator when Illustrator didn't have this. Oh yeah, same. <laughs> In the moment that this came as an update, I was like, <gasps> this changes everything like the fact that you can round corners so easily yeah. and you don't have to like hand build all of your round corners and i was like what is this like you know people yeah. you know all the kids coming to illustrator now they're never going to know how hard it was for us to have to make every single round corner from scratch ourselves do you ever think about like if we had the stuff we have now back when we were in school how much further <laughs> along we probably Oh, yeah. I also I also think a lot about the privileges of like how easy it is for me to animate whereas people had to do it on the paper you know back in the days yeah that's crazy um Gari wants to know do you use a pen or a mouse for illustrator mouse it's and just... you're using a wired mouse thank you yeah is that is that what what's the problem <laughs> I hate bluetooth mice that is, I have a vendetta against Bluetooth mice. I hate having to sync them. I hate having to charge or replace batteries. Give me a corded mouse any day. You know what? I'm figuring out. I also have a, a thing with Bluetooth. I I fell into the trap of buying one of those like um, AirPod. Um, oh yeah. And they're so expensive. And the thing is, like, okay, the sound is amazing. Yes, it is amazing, mm -hmm. but what a pain and i'm like i'm panicking that i'm gonna lose them all the time and it's, yeah I'm, I'm like this is this is so much better i'm so old school i will I say like i i use bluetooth earphones but that's because i have a bad habit of standing up from things and yanking stuff with me um so i can handle it with earphones but like with the mouse and stuff i used to use a bluetooth and i got so mad every time it would die on me mm -hmm. yeah i'm I'm having a hard time. And I'm like, they're falling all the time. And I'm just, yeah. I'm not, it's not going to last I'm, for long. I'm going to, I'm going to lose them. I'm a hundred percent sure. Yeah. 
Clever says, I would love to have a corded trackball, but they don't sell those corded anymore. A trackball? Yeah, you know the ones that had the little ball in the center? <gasps> yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just think I'm faster with the with the mouse and just yeah, clicking I, with, with the anchors and, you know, I think it's a little bit yeah. faster. I think in Photoshop, it's definitely easier with a tablet if you're drawing, but in Illustrator, it's much quicker with a mouse. I agree 100%. When I started in Photoshop um, a few years ago when I was when I was on Adobe Live, um, Paul Trainey was my my host that day. And we were trying to figure out like what our first version of Photoshop was. And mine was Photoshop 6. Not CS6, Oof. 6. 6. Wow. I don't remember so, which mine was. Yeah, maybe CS2 was mine. Yeah, I think mine was 6. And it was, I think, two, the year 2001. Wow. I think it was 2001 because it was... Wait, no. 2002 because I was in 8th grade, September 11th. So ninth grade was when I took computer graphics. It was 2002. Mm -hmm. so i have i have been in photoshop a long time cody says her first photoshop was was photoshop 7 <laughs> back in the mm -hmm. days yeah and uh, nice. megan says i got some bluetooth over ear headphones and they are life-changing for the clumsy of us yes i agree <laughs> i used to you know what it was was like when i would work out and i'd be like on the treadmill or something i cannot tell you how many times my hand would hit the cord and my iPhone would go flying. <laughs> like it would land on the, on the treadmill and it'd go Fling! and land like five feet away from me. I was like, this, this, there's gotta be a better way. <laughs> yeah, I, I can relate. I'm also incredibly clumsy. Harry says their first Photoshop was CS5 and they got serious with CS6. Uh-huh. Back in the days. Back in the day. And at the time they didn't, they'd only just come out, or they probably had them for a while, but like ones that were in the more affordable range. They finally had the Wacom Intuos tablet. So the ones where you're drawing, but you're looking up at the screen. Oh, I still miss that. Actually, you know what? I still like that. I, I used like those for like 10 years. I still find them like very, I don't know. I still like working on them, to be honest. It's better for your neck and shoulders. The work that yeah. I do though, like I, it, I, my stuff is way more accurate drawing like on a tablet, like on a mm. Cintiq. But because if I tried to go back to it now, it would be a huge learning curve. But I used, I used to use that for like photo editing and illustration and stuff. And I remember in ninth grade, when I first started in, in Photoshop, I painted with a mouse. And there was a Campbell soup commercial where the girl was sitting and drinking her Campbell soup at hand and she's drawing on this tablet. And I was like, mom, I want that. <laughs> and, and eventually we did find one and I used one for like 10 years before I upgraded to, a, to a, the small Cintiq at the time. I mean, people use, you know, everyone is so used to different tools and stuff. Like I know a dude. He's crazy. He animates uh, on his trackpad. Can you believe that? He uses what? his trackpad. And he's actually like really fast. I think, you know, if he got the hang of using other tools, it would be even faster or not. Maybe trackpad is his absolute gem and where he thrives, you know. That's but it's some, wild to me. It's really wild. Like everyone, you know, makes fun of him. Like, dude, how can you? Like, this is crazy. Yeah. 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 Um. See. William says that their first version was Photoshop 3 in 1995, which was the first version to have layers. What? Yeah. <laughs> wow, can you can you imagine like all of these software without layers? Actually, I know. I like that there were layers wild. when I first used it, but I think there was like a limit on layers when I did it. I just can't remember how many uh, like I just remember we had to recreate a piece of art and everyone was picking these ones that were easier to recreate. And I picked this one of this 
by Elizabeth Louis Vigie Lebron, who it was a portrait of like Marie Antoinette and her family. And I was like, well, I'm going for the hard one. <laughs> I didn't finish it. Thankfully, my teacher was like, listen, you chose a hard one. What you did so far is fine. <laughs> I mean, the stuff we take for granted. Can you believe like there is not layers? I mean, yeah, of course it had to start somewhere, but like we take those those things for granted. It's it's crazy. It really is, yeah. And uh, Bev says they're still using an Intuos tablet. Yeah. And Cody says I've always used an Intuos slash Intuos Pro, her favorite tablet. Mm. And Bev says it's not better for your neck when you're using a laptop. <laughs> guilty yeah you know, do, do you use a, a big screen or do you also work on a laptop shona um i do not work on a laptop i have a laptop but i don't really work on it um i have a big wide screen um mm. that is sitting on a on a prop it's got i've got like this um computer stand and then it's on a it's actually on a on a like little uh, monitor a lazy Susan so I can like just turn my computer side to side as needed um Fancy. yeah I just did that recently because I was pulling the whole stand and turning it when I was streaming and I was like there's got to be a better way <laughs> there's got to be a better way <laughs> got to be a better way so I did got that and then I use a I have a big Cintiq here so like my whole setup is just like this area um nice but you I know, do, I do have a laptop. It's just not strong enough for a lot of the things I use. Hmm. It's funny because like <laughs> I should be at this point, like having like a <laughs> a better setup. I feel. Uh, but the thing is, like, I get very, I feel like very intimidated by like big screens and stuff. And like, I feel that once everything is so big on my screen. I can literally notice all the flaws, you know, like it's, it's oh, stupid. Yeah. Like it, even on my tiny laptop, sometimes I even like watch my videos and I rescale them and I'm like, oh, okay, this feels better. Like this feels more comfortable. Because <laughs> right? when you're watching that big, you only see the flaws and stuff. And it's, it's really funny because at the co-working space that I go to is like a bunch of dudes doing uh, 3D stuff. And all mm -hmm. of them literally like all of them have two screens each and like you know super wide screen blah blah, blah. <laughs> and yeah. like all, you know their their desks are taken over by by the the monitors and stuff where whereas my desk is like a tiny laptop and then plants and then like art supply and then i always have like a little candle with me like making company oh, as well cute <laughs> is it a scented candle it is Ooh, what is it uh vanilla i think <laughs> oh, okay it's nothing just, wrong with that just a little um, bit of comfort you know yeah it's a. Uh, I have i got a, a wide set monitor because when i was um streaming more i realized that like i couldn't have everything up on my screen that i needed mm -hmm. and then when i work i like to watch netflix um no so you're one have, of those people you know i i'm one of those where i rewatch the same things over and over and over again so it's more background noise um and it's like a mix between like, I'll either listen to Spotify, Netflix, or like YouTube. And I just rotate, but so much of it is, is just um, background noise. I don't know. You know what? I, I think we spoke about it. Like I'm not a multitasker at all. Like this is already uh, such a, <laughs> yeah, such a stretch for me, like, you know, talking while, but at least, you know, we're having a, a lovely conversation. So that's okay. But like, I sometimes just work in complete silence because I really need to focus or like it it really requires like when it's more like this you know just vectorizing mm -hmm. then maybe I can put a podcast on but I don't I, I really can't understand people that it, it's not how my brain works like I, I can't have those yeah. many <laughs> things at the same time you know people that are actually watching something while they're working I find it crazy yeah there's there's days where I can do podcasts but it's not as often as I used to and it's like mm. the days that I, like when I really need to focus, I can't do anything with voices. Yeah. No. But if it's like a day where I'm just doing quick sketches or I'm just, you know, I'm coloring something in where it's not a whole lot of like, it doesn't take a lot of concentration. Like my brain can multitask it. I do have like voices and stuff in the background. Yeah. I can't do complete silence though. I 
because where I lived in Orlando, I was like right next to a small highway. So there was always like noise that I had to drown out. Mm. So like complete silence is almost, is like too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I guess, as you said, like, it depends on what I'm doing. If it's stuff like this, just like vectorizing, blah, 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 then maybe I can go crazy and do a podcast. But like, if, if I'm writing, actually, it's impossible. It has to be absolute silence, especially like writing in English, yeah. which is not my native language. I'm like, nope, <laughs> my brain is not going to work if there's anything else going on. Yeah, I definitely understand that. There are times too, if I'm like, there have been times that I've been streaming and I've, or I've been like on the phone with someone and I'm typing something out where I start typing what I'm saying. <laughs> and I'm like, that's, there were two thoughts happening here and they both <laughs> merged and that's not what needed to happen. Yep. Megan says that they do best with ASMR slash white noise in the background. Oh. And Clever says, I have voices in the background of my brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to roll. I'm curious about uh, what ASMR uh, they're listening to. Like, I guess, uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but I think that everyone has their own ASMR triggers and maybe they just haven't figured out yet what are theirs. Yeah, I agree. What, what's, what's yours, Shauna? So I have visual ASMR and then I have auditory ASMR. So like the visual is like actually like watching people on YouTube, like getting massages. <laughs> getting massages. Yeah. It's just, it's something, it just right. gives like, yeah, like it gives those like feel good chills. And then um, the auto ones are the ones where people are like taking their fingers when they're really dry and they're like doing them against the, <gasps> oh. like, I love that. Or like the tapping. Um, oh, the tap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, but it's all like quick hand motion things and like anytime I, I don't the only one I don't like is when people are doing things like this mm, okay okay yeah that's not it's, like my I like the like the dry sound it's so specific isn't it mm -hmm. I don't have a and lot of like the sound stuff for me it's more like a, I really have a thing for miniatures <laughs> oh yeah and like people making miniature stuff or uh, another thing that I'm really like big on uh, have you seen those uh, okay coming out uh on my asmr uh, fetish or something uh have you seen those people cutting uh kinetic sand oh yes yes oh. i love the sound it's so good it's yeah. amazing yeah all, yeah, all of I, it is amazing yeah this i i, I can get with you on the sound it's weird because like <laughs> i like watching it because it's very it's very relaxing to watch it is but the sound i like the sound it's it's a good sound mm -hmm. One of my friends did a did a series where she did um, ASMR like tactile lettering, and she had this mold made that said "Give me chills." And she did one of kinetic sand where she took a knife and she just started cutting it. Oh, that, yeah, that's that gives me the that floats my boat a hundred percent. Cody says that she listens to a lot of nature sound ASMR while working. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty good too. And Megan says, for working, I have to do I have to do no talking, auditory for sure, especially like mic scratching with metal dental tools. Interesting. <laughs> wow, th there you go. Like I, this is what I love about ASMR. Like it gets so niche. It really does. <laughs> or you have the people that like there's there's also like role play. So it's like someone's like you're going to the dentist, and they're <laughs> but they they <laughs> whisper everything, <laughs> like. Now I'm going to brush your teeth. Like, <laughs> what? I mean, it can get There's a bit creepy. Uh, yeah, it can get a little bit weird. The yeah, yeah there's there's, all, all there's some that get very very specific, and then there's others that are very like I like watching too. Um, those people that do like the energy cleansings, but like what? the ones out in the out in the world, like someone like street people, like people on the street where they're like, I want to cleanse your energy, and so they're like. <laughs> they're like waving around them to like clear the air <laughs> <laughs> wait is that they're a niche really, of ASMR? it is a niche. <laughs> it's like a door it's a tourist trap is what it is a lot of them are tourist traps i'm um, okay you have to send me a link afterwards i'm so curious i will yeah there's there's some interesting ones but like 
and, and a lot of it has like a lot of like weird you know just crazy like people are all around background noise um one of the things i used to do too is i there's a there's an app called coffitivity and you can play different coffee shop sounds mm -hmm. i remember that yep yeah, that was a that was always a favorite of mine too because then I could just have noise. Mm -hmm. Annika says I like lo-fi or piano. Yes, I agree. Also a good option. You know one thing that Oh, sorry, go for it. I was just I also just like listening. They have um like sound loops of like the Epcot entrance music at Disney and <sighs> I listen to that too. <laughs> it's memories. Oh, yes. I love that. There is this uh, heavy, I mean, you probably, I don't know. Have, do you know this channel on YouTube called Primitive Technology? No. Oh my God. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not sure this qualifies as ASMR, but maybe. But it's basically like this dude and it's completely silent, like just, you know, nature sounds and stuff. And he goes in the middle of nature and he oh. builds everything out, you know, from scratch. It's like making fire out of scratch or making like a kiln or making pottery from, you know, just dirt and soil and, and building like a house and stuff. And it's just like, you know, it is, as the name says, like primitive technology. And oh, that's like, crazy. There's a, there's a guy on TikTok that does that where he goes to like to the middle of the woods and he cooks, but he cooks like things that look like they could be five-star meals on yes. like a, on like a fire. It's the, it's wild. Um, Gar says, can I watch part one I missed yesterday? Yes, um, both yesterday and today are available for, will be, today will be available, but they'll both be available for replay. Um, but we will also be doing Creative Encore, which will be a replay of yesterday and today on tomorrow and Thursday um, from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time. And it will be a replay of the chat of the show, but the chat will be live. So there'll be people chatting but we obviously will not be responding because they will be pre-recorded. Yeah, and just uh, this is what we've done yesterday. A couple of different options, but just a little recap. We've done this sketch of this cute family, and this is what I'm vectorizing today. Can we just take a moment to like appreciate how much movement is in that piece? Like the yeah. skirts, the <laughs> hair. The... I love it. Oh, thank you. I'm uh, try my best. Oh, so we have uh, Megan says video game music is also good because it literally is made for you to get things done with it playing in the background. And that reminds me, I saw people doing like the Super Mario, like do, 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 do music, like the one that gets really fast to get things done <laughs> because they would play it and felt like they had to keep working. Amazing. Yeah, it works like the brainwash of uh, all of you just getting in the, in the zone. You know, I do that a lot, kind of like a similar system, but sometimes I get in the mood of listening to the very same song on repeat oh yeah so, i don't know if you guys do that but like uh yeah it's a bit awkward but maybe like i might listen okay this is almost like live stream confessions but sometimes i listen to the very same song for the whole week and it's almost like they become the song of a specific project you know and every yes. time i play it i'm like oh i listened to this a lot when i was doing that in that project so I have, I have music that still takes me back to certain points in my life. Um, I used, I loved the Chronicle of Narnia book series. And mm -hmm. there was this one CD of, there were only two songs on this, on the CD that I listened to on repeat constantly, because to me, they sounded like Narnia mm -hmm. and I can't listen to them the, to this day without feeling like I'm reading the book of Narnia, you know, the Chronicles of Narnia again. Oh. All of that emotional uh, connection. Yeah. Right? But I also get like, I'm like you, I get, I, I get like fixated on one song and it like hits, it, I end up throwing it into like every playlist because I end up loving it so much. Slash obsessed. <laughs> yeah. And then I, and then I get really tired of it and I have to abandon it for a while. Okay. So that's the difference. I don't get tired of the stuff usually that I put on, on the repeat. Yeah. It's so weird. I don't know how my brain works. <laughs> I think because for most, me, it's most like, people get tired. Yeah, I think I have to like take a break from it. And but usually it's like the whole genre I have to take a break from. So I'll switch from like listening to jazz to like piano and things like that. Hmm. Um, let's 
see. Oh yeah, Yurel says the builder guy makes like pools and everything. It's so cool. Mm. That's like it's wild to me that there are people that can like make things from scratch like that. <laughs> it's like these people deserve to live, you know, because they actually like earned it. <laughs> you know, they they can uh, be self sufficient, <laughs> and yeah. uh, you know, like I I have so much stuff for granted, and I didn't even know carrot flowers existed. So maybe now I, I earned some points on deserving to live because <laughs> because I understand the world around me a little bit more. I don't know. Yeah, you know what I love about like gardening and so too to go back to that conversation is like I didn't realize that there's flowers that will bloom like all year and like if you plant them once they just keep going they keep showing up every year and then there's ones that like you plant once and then they die and then you have to do it again if you want them again and that like with tulips that was the one thing I learned was like you we have ones that are going to bloom early spring mid spring and late spring mm -hmm. no I we just mom and I just threw them in wherever we were just, we lost track of what was what. So we're just like, oh, we're just going to put them everywhere. Um, <laughs> so it's going to be a surprise and it might be a very patchy garden, but it'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I mean, that's the joy as well is like figuring out how much little control you have and, and all the small surprises that mm -hmm. once you follow like the growth every single day, you're like, this is, this is so magical. Like mama nature is perfect. We had this one, um, this one succulent setup where it was like this really cool looking vase and there were holes around it. So there was like a succulent in each one mm -hmm. and we, it's, and we just kept it outside and we had a, a, enough rain last year. All of a sudden it started going and the whole thing was like this, like parade of succulents all around and they just kept growing on each other. Oh, that's amazing. I love succulents. Uh, Cody says the ones that die off are annuals perennials come back year after year see that's where I get lost because to me annuals sounds like those would repeat not perennials mm -hmm. Megan says in an apocalypse scenario the only skill I even vaguely have is crochet she can need us some sweaters right? yes exactly there you go. we can keep us warm that's a skill I would protect you if I could but i would be the first one to die because uh i have no strength so because kind of like what i was thinking i was like if we were in an apocalyptic scenario like i have nothing to contribute <laughs> <laughs> no of course you do i can bake i, I could bake see there you go you're gonna bake yeah. us some cakes i, I make really good stuff. pumpkin muffins mm, i don't think i had those before it sounds Ooh. good I should send you the recipe. They are quite delicious. Mm. I make them um, for Thanksgiving and Christmas every year. And this last year, because I couldn't see any of my friends, I mailed baked goods to them. <laughs> oh my God, you're what an amazing soul. I had, well, I've got one friend who, we lived across the street from each other when we were both in Orlando and our dogs were best friends. And um, so she, and she used to cook for me too. She, she was a chef, so she'd, She'd text me and she'd be like, I made, you know, there was one night she was like, I made seafood boil. Do you want some? And I was like, it's 9 p.m. But yes, always. <laughs> and so I, mean, I met her downstairs and I, I just got this plate of seafood. <laughs> it was great. I mean, you can always freeze it and eat it for lunch the other day, right? Exactly. Oh. Um, and so and then like so her thing was cooking and then I would bake. And so oh. I baked her. Um, I did pumpkin bread with a, a rum glaze. A vanilla rum glaze wow and it got to the point i just started making like little ones um when i lived in orlando because i had like the front office always wanted them so i gave them to the staff in the front office and then i'd bring her like three and <laughs> it worked it worked out i used to do pumpkin pull apart bread too which is really good a pumpkin what uh pull apart bread so it's like have you ever heard of like monkey bread they're like little pieces of bread that are baked together and then you just like pull them apart no, sounds amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. I have to send you recipes because they're quite delicious. Um, so we've got about just under 15 minutes before our artist spotlight everyone. So make sure that you're getting your portfolios in. Mm -hmm. Fairy would like to know what is your favorite music genre? Oh, oh my God. That's a really, Jesus, that's a tough question. 
Do I have a favorite one? I listen to a lot of different things. Uh, I don't have, a, <laughs> I don't think I have a specific genre, but I can tell you that the artist that I listened to the most last year, according to Spotify, was Nils from, uh, who's kind of like a, he's German. He's amazing. If you don't know him, you should check it out. Amazing music to work uh, to. It's a bit of a hybrid between electronic music and classical music, actually. Like he's, oh. he's, yeah, it's it's really good. It's all about like the small nuances and, and songs yeah. that grow like very slowly and suddenly you're like partying Ooh. while you're, you know, it's, it's amazing. He's so good and yeah, he's amazing. You should check him out. I so I will. Yeah, I don't have a specific genre, but he's been the one that I listened to the most last year, I think. I have, I have so many playlists and they're all based on different genres and it depends on my mood and the time of year, what I'm listening to. Mm -hmm. Cause like there, there are certain songs that I can't listen to certain times. Like I can only listen to like a certain set of songs in the spring. Aha. Uh -huh. What is the spring song? Um, so spring is, what, what, what I, hold on. I'm going to pull it up. Um, Megan would like to know what was the name of the music, the musician you just mentioned? Nils. So N I L S from, so F R A H M, I think. This is how you spell it. Uh, okay, I can try to write it here. <laughs> there Nils. We go. From. I think it's like this. I'm sorry, Nils, if I uh, misspelled your name, but I think it's it's this. He is great. Awesome. You guys. Thank you. No, okay, thanks. so the my Studio Vibe Spring playlist is the XX, Alt J, <gasps> yeah. oh. um, Brand New Day by Sting, <laughs> some Zero Seven, some Death Cab for Cutie. Loving it. Some Coldplay, Broken Bowels. Um, mm -hmm. I just added some Enya last night. <laughs> oh my God. Can we talk about Enya? I love Enya. <laughs> Enya is so good. <laughs> What's your favorite? Um, okay. So the ones that I added to here, because I love so much of her music, but the two that I added last night were the Celts and Caribbean Blue. Yes. That's what I was hoping for. Okay. Caribbean Blues is yes. my top. Like it's always on my most listened to as well on Spotify. Cause I just love that song. So too. good it's oh my gosh it's so good um and then the other ones that i like from her like storms in africa is a really pretty one um tempest varnum that's another one because i like how creepy it is girl you I know so much more in you than i do actually <laughs> i so i like i've I have parents that are very much into music especially my dad and so i grew up listening to like enya and seal and like all these bands that like kids don't generally probably listen to mm-hmm and um, I always had uh, Enya CDs, so I would be like painting in my room and I would just have Enya on repeat for hours. She's so good. I love her. She's so good. And um, so that's like part of my spring playlist. And then I have one for fall and like fall is Pat Metheny group and um, various jazz artists. and. <laughs> Any and like some David Arkenstone, like anything to me that sounds like fall. So interesting. You know, you mentioned all J, and I actually have a funny story because uh, when I was studying here in Sweden and hyper, I was listening to a lot of all J. That was uh, 2014. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was a period of my life that I was working a lot. And then the funny thing is that now I think my brain got conditioned to like connect alt J to, you know, focusing at work. And now the reversed way around also works whenever I really want to focus. And I'm like, ah, like I'm, I'm working really bad today. Like I, I'm having no focus. If I put alt J, it's like straight. Interesting. You know. Yeah. There, there is even, I think there's a word for that when you kind of like just reverse the, the stimuli and you get the, the response. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like a like a Pavlov's dog thing. Yeah. The, yeah. I think that's that might be the the word. Yeah. It's um. It really is. It's funny too. Like how music can sort of take you to different portion. You know, different parts of your life. Yeah. Like Yanni is another one that makes my playlists. 
Have you have you watched there's a documentary and I think it's on Netflix as well. It's called um, Alive Inside. No. Oh my god. Okay, this was life changing for me. So it, it's all about like uh, music therapy to older patients that have dementia or Alzheimer and stuff, and like they oh. take these people that are in complete like vegetative like a sort of state. You know, like they're non responsive. They are like just bodies you know like lying there and stuff yeah. and and then they do like this kind of like music therapy with like uh exposing them to songs that maybe were relevant to them on their teenage years and stuff like that and it's crazy like I cried so much watching that documentary but it's, it's so crazy how they they change you know completely yeah it's really good oh that's amazing I do know I've seen a lot of videos where like they'll put a person with Alzheimer's in front of a piano and they'll just start playing, you know, they remember everything. Um, when my, when my grandma was in the, in the nursing home back when she was still around, she, she started to get dementia and, or she had Alzheimer's and she had what was called sundowners. So like in the morning she was very with it. And then like by the end of the day, she, it was, she just had Alzheimer's mm-hmm. and, um, but what we learned, we had no idea she could speak fluent Polish. <laughs> uh. All right. And she was, yeah. And she was a nurse her whole life. So like when we first put her into the, into the nursing home, because she needed, she needed help. Um, they started, they gave her a name tag because she thought she worked there. So they gave her a name tag and she would help out with various residents. She thought she was just a nurse on staff. And then she was, they, they sent us letters and pictures and things. And they, they called us one day and they go, did you know she speaks fluent Polish? And we're like, no, no, we did not know this. That's crazy yeah okay. now, now is a uh, banana time just in case people uh, haven't noticed <laughs> banana that, time but that's yeah, anyone... yeah, it's crazy how people's brain work like and how how many layers are just like hiding in there and once you activate them like there's a whole flush of yeah it, personality it's, it's incredible there was one that was going around on facebook for a while and it was this woman who was in a wheelchair and they started playing Swan Lake and she was former prima ballerina. And she just started like her hands and arms. She just started dancing to the music because she remembered the whole thing. Uh, Becca yes. says, thanks B. Nice sound from Nils from. Mm. Hope you guys like it. He is great. So talented. Yeah. Cody Bear goes, banana time. <laughs> banana time. Got, got the inspiration here. Yes. So I'll make it slightly, slightly different. Yeah. If anyone is just joining in, we are, um, we're creating this. Well, uh, B is great. I'm sitting here just hyping. Um, but B has been creating this amazing illustration that was started in Photoshop, was sketched in Photoshop with um, Kyle's Happy HB pencil, and started with this. And now we're vectoring in Illustrator. And she's making the banana dress. It's banana time now. Yes, it's banana time. Joe Maya <laughs> says, live is always better than the replay. The chat is awesome. Yes. Yeah. I try to read as much of the chat as possible so that when people do get a replay, they know what we're responding to. I'm sad I, I don't get to, to see all the fun stuff on the chat. <laughs> That's why I'm here. I read yeah. it. And make sure you don't miss anything important. Thank you, girl. And if anyone is just joining into, there will be these both of the, yesterday and today are going to be available for um to watch on replay, but they will also be in the creative encore tomorrow uh, from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time. And it will be a replay of yesterday and today but the chat will be live. So if you miss out on the chat experience, you can have a conversation with everybody in the chat. Um, we just obviously will not be answering questions because it will be recorded. Leah says, wow, this is awesome. Or this is looking amazing. Such awesome development from yesterday. I mean, it's, uh, don't don't mind the colors. Hopefully we, we're gonna get there. I'm finishing. I think I'm not too far away from finishing the shapes. So we should be able to, explore a bit of color i just i would love if we had the time to 
because I want to show you guys some tricks. Yeah, well, we have about five minutes till the artist spotlight, and then we'll be about five minutes on the artist spotlight, and then we'll have another 20 or so minutes to work. That should be enough. Fingers crossed. Yes. I did see someone ask a little earlier, um, and their question unfortunately got buried, but they're asking how you were picking colors. Uh, at this point, randomly, I just like pick whatever saturated color here at the top and make sure that they are different from each other so I can, you know, kind of see how the shapes are building up. Mm -hmm. But at this point is absolutely bonkers because I don't, I, I like to take things at, you know, one step at a time. Now I'm just like shapes and yeah. vectorizing stuff. And then I mind the colors afterwards. But one thing that I don't do, I know that a lot of people use, um, there's websites that you can pick, you know, pre-made uh, swatches and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that because then like, where the, where does all the fun go to? You know, like the, the, the big fun is like you choosing the colors and you're learning about the colors as well. Yeah. So I don't I like, mean, you know, pre-made sort of palettes. Yeah, I think so that's, so what you're referring to is um, Adobe Color. And I think- Oh yeah, that's, that's one of the tools, yeah. Yeah, I think like if you don't know color theory very well, it's a great it's a great jumping off point and it's a great way to learn like what colors work well together. But it is also really fun just to experiment and play and see what color combinations you may not have thought of yet show up. Like the one that the current color palette you're doing for the person on the right reminds me of like Rugrats, um, that Nickelodeon <laughs> show. It's like it's a very 90s palette. Uh, yeah, I'm not even thinking about it. Like, I think I want to give them like proper, uh, you know, proper skin colors. So right now it's just like yeah. bunkers. Megan says, whenever I use those pre-made palettes, I end up adjusting them myself. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I think they're, they're a really good jumping off point, especially if you're just absolutely stuck. No, I think, yeah, you have a very fair point. I was not being fair. I think, uh, you know, if you're starting, uh, especially, you know, that's that gives you a head start and, you know, you can start. It's, it's the same that we were talking about, like you understand by copying it, right? Yeah. But and that's an, another thing, yeah. too, is you can look at what other artists are doing in their color palettes and sort of color pick to see how those colors work together as a study. And that's, that's actually something I really admire on people when I see people that they use colors that I would never pick. And I'm mm -hmm. like, and, and, you know, combinations that I'm like, but how does this, how does this person even, you know, manages to make this work? Because like these colors, I would never think of them because like in my head, they would be so ugly together, but this person uh, makes, you know, such an interesting twist. And so it's, yeah, I love, you know, that's an aspect that I love paying attention to. Yeah. I'm looking at people's work. Raf makes a good point too. Um, he says it can also be a great tool to start when you're colorblind. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it is very good for people as ter in terms of accessibility as well. Yeah, absolutely. And Megan says, I think maybe the peeled banana wouldn't have the dark brown on the open end. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, I didn't even so, catch it. So she like... is so right. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I love how she was like huh? also very polite about it. She was like, I think. <laughs> exactly. Well, um, we actually are at time for the artist spotlight. So uh, let's do this. Yeah. I'm going to pull my chat out of the way so I can get ready to share my screen. Mm -hmm. So just one moment. All right, everyone. Let's get excited. Oh, hang on. I have, when I did the, the let's, let's increase the size thing. Um, it decided it was going to increase the size of all of my windows that were open. So I didn't want to share it when it was still a bright, huge. Okay. So here's our artist spotlight today. We have Dina Amin. Yay. Round Woo. of applause. Woo Dina, she's amazing. Oh, do you know her? I actually do. Uh, she's, a, really? she's an internet friend. 
Oh, what a small world. Yeah. Well, we're going to just, we're going to go through the projects and hype them up. So are there any that are standing out to you right now that you want to start with? Uh, you know what? I actually know her work. So maybe we can, we can, I think the first one that I saw from her was the fourth one over there. This one? Yes. What's inside the things we throw away? Uh, oh, so the, I mean, the thing that I love the most about Dina is that, so she's uh, from Egypt. She lives in Cairo. And first, I didn't know of any other women like doing animation in Egypt. So she was the first one that I got to know. But I just love all of her like sort of maker mentality. You know, like she goes to these uh, street markets and buys all of these like super old electronics that people are, you know, throwing away and stuff. And this kind of mentality of like, okay, let's see what's inside of this, you know, like, let's see all the parts and this, you know, what we were talking about that we don't know how a carrot flower looks like, you know, we don't know how yeah. a, all the things that we use daily, like a hairdryer, our cell phone, we don't know what, what those things are made of. And then the first one is that she released this stop motion series that she was just like, okay, showing this object beautifully animated as well. And then just, you know, like showing all the parts inside of the objects as well. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I'm watching this um, stop motion GIF that she has on her on her page here. And this is one, it's mesmerizing to just watch over and over and over again. But like, this <sighs> is so cool. And I love this, the the animated poster. Look yeah. at that. Let me see if I, look at that. That's so cool. Honestly, she's, she's my hero. And like the other thing as well is that I feel... <sighs> I admire her so much as well because like, I, I feel that I had to leave Brazil in order to, you know, find, let's say, like better prospects in terms of work and, you know, having a easier, like creative <laughs> life mm -hmm. outside of Brazil. And, you know, but she's doing it all from Egypt, you know, she doesn't have that excuse like, oh, I need to, you know, leave my country to, you know, go, go north where that kind of work is more valuable. She's like, no, you know, she's not asking for anyone's permission. She's just doing it straight from Egypt and doing amazing, passionate work. Yes, this is incredible. And I love her, her about, I move things and play with trash. <laughs> Simple right? and to the point. And I love it. <sighs> and like, it goes to show that like, you don't need uh, any fancy, you know, crazy equipment. Like you, you work with what you have, you improvise along the way. Yeah. I saw this shoe storage system. This this caught my eye, this particular image. Because I wanted to see how it works. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it looks like you can move these bands. There's little hooks on here. Oh, oh that's interesting. So. Things that I never would have thought of. Mm-hmm. If you go like the, the one with the keyboard is super good as well. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll click that one. CSS tricks, stop motion intro. Oh, let's see if we can, I want to make sure that my computer will hold up. Here we go. Just like a little intro for a YouTube channel, but like so well made. And again, like this thing of like breaking down the objects and. Oh, she literally broke the keyboard. For yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. Wow. There are people out there that are just like so talented. And I don't know. I feel like, you know, I come up with all of those excuses like, oh, I'm going to be good when I have this and when I have that. And I, I don't have yeah. enough access or I don't have enough time or I don't have enough money. And then it comes a person like Dina that like, you know, you know, Look at all of your excuses. Look at what I'm doing. And it's amazing and so passionate. And, you know, you yeah. work with the resources that you have. Oh, my God. It's so cute. I love mm. it. I'm, I am giving her a follow. This is, I want to keep watch on her career. This is incredible. Yeah. See, there's no excuse. I always tell people too, like if you, you know, people are like, what do I need to get into lettering? What do I need to get into illustration? I'm like, you need a piece of paper and a pencil. Like there's, it's like the lowest bar to get started. 
Yeah, and passion. You know, like I, I, she was at some point like showing like how you could build a tripod out of like just a a toilet paper roll, like a you know, an, yeah, an old one. They could just like cut a hole. Then there's a tripod. Look at that for your phone. You know, and that works. This makes That's me nervous working. because I hate use. I always hated playing with balloons because I hated if they popped in my hand. <laughs> I thought you would like it because of the sound, like the dry. <laughs> I don't mind the, the sound. I, I it's the it's the trying to tie the balloon. Mm. I can't tell you how many times I snapped the balloon against my finger because I just couldn't do it. It's the frustration. It is. Okay, so it looks like these are similar. So we have eye pixels and then we have the HI machine. Uh, maybe the top one where, or that one. Yeah. I say, well, look, let's look at this one. Then we'll look at the next one to see if it's a progression. Oh. Hello. Oh, I think this one, she was just like dismantling like old dolls and, you know, getting the eyes and then transforming them into this like interactive, like sensor moved kind of thing. Oh, that's creepy. I love it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at that. She, oh. yeah. Look at that. <laughs> it's crazy. And you know, no one needs like fancy materials. Like she gets that kind of stuff that people consider to be trash, you know? Yeah. She blows my mind. She's That's my hero. That's incredible. Wow. Okay. So we have this and it spells out hi. So let's look at this other one where it says the HI machine. Oh, this is it in, in practice. Uh -huh. Look at that. Okay. So it looks like there's a little sensor down here. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's, oh, how interesting. I'm blown away. I I am speechless. I am without speech. Honestly, nothing but uh, pure respect. Yeah, this is incredible. <laughs> Leah says, imagine walking into her house and seeing all those separate doll heads. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Creepy. Oh, it's so funny. Well, wonderful, wonderful job, everyone. Make sure that you please give Dina Amina a follow. I have, I believe I followed. It just hasn't updated here. Um, otherwise I will be following. And then I guess let's get back to finishing up what we can on, on your piece today. Oh yeah, we still have about, okay. we still have about 20 minutes, right? We have, okay, so it's, why do I, I have to end? So we've got like 15. 15. Okay, about Sweet. 15. Yeah. I. Okay. Okay. Speed, speed. No, but I think we, you know, I might not just add all the details and financing that I would, but I think it's important that we, we dive a little bit into colors. Yeah. And I'm just this, replicating. Oh, sorry, go for I, it. I just say the dress looks like something out of the 90s and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at prints. I'm all up for prints. Actually, I discovered that I'm quite a fan of animal prints, which I didn't know, but it's because like, I think whenever I was growing up, I always saw this kind of like very tasteless uh, animal print. But I think nowadays people are doing more interesting, playful uh, animal prints. So I'm realizing I actually like it. Oh, this was not included. What? Oh no, you missed a banana. There you go. <laughs> I missed a banana. How is this going? Okay. I'm just going to do like a little it. shadow here and then we can actually do colors. And I can show Sweet. you guys a couple of things. So since we do have about like 15-ish minutes, if anyone has any other questions in the chat, please let us know and I will relay them. And Jessica says, what other creatives does B admire? Oh my God. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, no pressure. Uh, oh, uh, it's, it's honestly way too many people. Uh, Seriously, I, I feel like it's one of those things that if I start saying the names, I'm sure that I'm going to be, you know, missing out, uh, missing out some important ones. Uh, I can tell you who one of my favorite animator is. Uh, oh, yes. 
because he blows my mind every time. And he's one of the most prolific animators that I know. And everything that he does is like pure, absolute pure gold. I can quickly show you uh, Future Savage on Instagram. So like, I definitely recommend a follow. He is uh, oh. the best animator that I know. End, <laughs> period. <laughs> he's, he's great, he's uh, insane. So I recommend a check and a, and a follow. Awesome. Okay, let's do colors now, proper colors. All right. Are we ready? I'm thinking I want to have this fresh, fresh summer colors because uh, you know what? It just snowed so much here today. I was not happy about that. Did it really? Oh no. <laughs> it, it, it was like, you know, proper blizzard. I was like, oh, wow. Weren't really? we supposed to be like uh, in the middle of uh, we're starting with spring now? Like, what is this? Okay, let's, let's try a minty thing. And then, okay, so this actually, lady. Yeah, it's actually it. warm here today because I got a notification on my phone where it was like, expect temperatures to be 10 to 20 degrees higher than normal today. And I'm like, listen, I'm, I, I want it. Give it to me. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, ready for it. <laughs> it would be different. Like, like I, um, I was chatting with my mom, you know, a few, a couple weeks ago, she was like, why are you so excited for spring? You're never this excited for spring. And I'm like, normal winter doesn't have us cooped up in a pandemic where I can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing is like, I'm looking forward to warm weather so I can go walk outside and not freeze my butt off. I just want to also wear like a little less layers. I would be happy yeah. about that. The parkas get, get annoying after a while. Too many layers. Uh... I'm gonna just quickly change some colors here. So this is actually something that I use a lot. You guys are gonna see me using is this kind of like a color wheel here. Then now you have to click on this advanced options. I'm not quite sure why they changed it, but it's here now. And th this is like such a speedy way to change colors. We, we're gonna go through it. Um, maybe. Jessica also would like to know, did you get to watch any sessions from Adobe Max last year? And if so, what were some of the ones you watched? I didn't get to watch it. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, Don't I need to I need to get in the habit of like just just catching up with those things. Like I don't know, like especially I think since Corona uh, started mm -hmm. to be a thing. Like sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but I sometimes feel overwhelmed about like the amount of stuff and, you know, live streams and uh, yeah, yeah. so much stuff to, you know, catch up with. And, and then you have to call your parents and call your friends. And like, it's so many calls. Yeah, I it's what did they call it? They called it Zoom fatigue. Oh, there is a OK. People are already calling yeah. it Zoom fatigue. Cause like early on, it was a lot of, everything was online, online conferences, online this, online that. And there hit a point where people were like, I'm done. And yep. like, I, I even hit that point too. I was just like, I need a, I need a break from all the online stuff. Oh, yeah. It's too much. Cody says, I'm very excited for spring. And Megan says, yes, we are in fake spring season right now, but there's still a chance in the next two months we'll get more snow. Yeah, it's supposed to drop back down into like the 40s for the next couple of weeks where I'm living. And it's, I can handle the 40s. The 40s are fine. I still have to wear a parka, but like not as, I don't have to layer as many things. Hmm. But like, we've had a lot of snow. We had two feet at one point and I mean, it was up to my waist. <laughs> ugh. Almost. I mean, snow can be fun. Uh, it's lovely when it comes in all of that, but yeah, it's, while, it's really you're like head enough. Bye. Yeah, it's really pretty at first, and then they plow, and then it gets all muddy and and gross. Mm -hmm. It's like it's pretty for like that first day, and then as soon as they start plowing, our our mailbox got taken out twice this season from the snow plow. Uh, 
<laughs> we, the, the city had to give us a temporary one because our just all we walked out one day and our mailbox was on the ground. Oh my god. Chaos. Uh, Uriel wants to know if you ever use global colors. No. What, what, what is that? Global colors. I don't think I know that one. Do you know what she's talking about? I'm, th I'm wondering if it's like, I'm going to be honest, I don't know. I should know, but I don't know. No, um, I don't use global colors. Uh, I think the thing that I use a lot is actually that thing that I showed you guys. We, we're going to go there. The recolor artwork. Yeah, I use that a lot and another little trick on uh, on photoshop as well that i'm trying to rush my best so i can show you all oh, oh, oh. leah says i'm just looking forward to putting the trash out without the bin lid being frozen shut <laughs> The small joys in life, isn't it? Mm hmm We had a few ice storms where, like, I walked out and my car was covered in, like, an inch of ice. Oof. Yeah, that's not fun. Um, and Jessica says, yeah, we got to remember to take care of ourselves sometimes and take a break from screens. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh-huh. This is what this is, okay. We'll work on this contrast later. Okay, so this lady. So this is the, sometimes this is how I use it as well. Like when I just quickly want to change the colors of things. And I'm like, okay, she's blue, but I want her to have a proper skin colors as well, more realistic. And then I think I want her hair to be playful as well, like colorful. Oh, okay, we'll change the dress later. Oh, I like that pink. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's like, a, that's a nice, that's a nice pink. I want her to be wearing a perky. Okay, blue lipstick. What about that? And then glasses to be white. J. Kim says, in Jamaica, we do not do layers. Huh? J. Kim is in Jamaica. So yeah. they're in the, they're in the, I think it's in the Caribbean. Yeah. And that is no layers. So they're just hot I all the time. Oh, no layers in terms of like what they wear. Yeah, not, not, not <laughs> I don't know. Is it, is it like Photoshop layers? Is it you know, how they're dressed? No, but have you, have you seen the Photoshop like one layer challenges before where you have to like paint everything on one layer? Oh, I have not seen that thread. That sounds uh, difficult. I want to try it one of these days because I feel like it'd be a really fun challenge, but I'm like terrified because I rely so much on layers. Wow, everything one layer. That requires all the confidence that I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this looks so good. We're getting there, I'm speeding up. Uh, and then I think I want this to... You're still good. You've got about four to five minutes. Oh, but I still want to show... I want to show so much to show, Shauna. So we much need, to show. Like so more little days, time. more hours. And this should be more like it goes. That sounds horrendous. One layer, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What did I do Kiki. here? Hmm? Kiki would like to know um, how do you decide when to use recolor artwork? versus choosing a new color with the color picker sometimes it's like uh, the amount of colors that i'm using or, or like when i want to have a global view of the colors as well just, i don't know if that makes sense uh, but 
And sometimes like, you know, when you use like a lot of random colors and then you just want to make sure that you ha you're not having like a thousand different swatches. Like I, I can show that as well. And like, for example, now I want to take the colors from, from here. So I just get it. Oh, that color palette is so cool. We are getting there. And then I want to change the yellow. Oh, it's white. And oh, we need to do the striped. Uh... Oh, yes, the belt. Or the baby, yeah. the striped baby, the no, this... baby. Sushi baby. <laughs> Maybe we <laughs> let's let's leave the baby like like this for now, a little omelette uh, or like a taco baby. But <laughs> I want to make the burrito baby. Burrito baby. I want to make the the trans uh, you know flag thingy that we were supposed to do, right. and then we didn't get a chance to do that. Yeah, Jessica T says I love the colors. Oh, thank you. Getting there. And then I think this is supposed to be pink. Maybe we can use a, a lighter pink. I think was it blue, pink, white, pink, blue, I think is what it is. Yeah, I think so too. I can double check too to be safe. Thank you, Shauna. You're welcome. And then this is white in the middle, should be. Yes, okay. So it is, let's see if I can zoom in. Dip, dip. It's that. Yeah. We got this. Okay. All right, we've got two minutes. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> okay, okay, maybe last but not least. <laughs> Just quickly want to want to show you guys uh, a trick that changed everything about the way that I work with uh, colors. Okay, let's say I have this. <laughs> I love it. I would need time to make it better, but export. And then, uh, yeah, Adobe Live uh, color. Oof. And then, oh, let me move you. Adobe Live Color. If I drag it into Photoshop, oops, okay, let's pretend that I don't have this and I exported things properly. <laughs> this is a tool that changed my life and I always, always, always use it. I come here to adjustment layers here. Mm -hmm. And then I add an adjustment layer of selective color. And that oh. gives me access to all the colors in my composition, like all the reds. So now I'm gonna change all the reds in my composition. And you can see the colors. It's almost like you're, you're adding this like compositing layer to all the colors. And it's almost like you're using this to unify all the colors and bring more harmony to, to how you're picking oh, your colors. Okay. And then, okay, let's change the yellows. And here, and you know, this, this changes everything. Like, okay, let's change the greens. Dun, dun, dun. This is so cool. Dante says, clipping masks save lives. <laughs> um, and then like, I keep the blues a bit. And then especially when it gets to like the whites, the neutrals and the blacks that can change everything. So. Oh, very, very white. cool. Uh, and then with the neutrals, like how much that changes, you know, the whole, the whole, all of the colors. And then with the blacks, And you can go very wild, you know, with how you want your shadows yeah. to to look like. And then if you compare it with like, oh wow, before and after, 
That's amazing. It's Take it's like a, everybody. Yeah, it's like a color grading thing, you know, that you do on top yeah. of a. Uh, and sometimes I do like several versions of it. Like I'll add another selective color and I'll play around with it a little bit more. And I think it's like, I always also try to take a break from it because I think we can definitely get saturated and look at something for too long. And, you know, yeah. uh, I think it's always, always good to take a break from your illustration and go back to it with fresh eyes and have a whole other perspective from it. I agree. Well, we have to wind down because we are at the oh. end of our stream. But B, it has been absolutely wonderful having you here. This has been so fun watching your process from start to finish. Just a reminder, almost, everyone, almost finished. <laughs> almost. Oh, you know what? I, I think it looks fantastic. So just a reminder. Okay. Just a reminder, stay tuned for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Hope you have a great day. There'll be a replay tomorrow at 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific time. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs> Bye. -bye.